Hey everybody, welcome to the Luxury Side Lounge where luxury is rarely practical, but it's always enjoyable. I'm your host, Luxury Sai, and today I'm sharing a breaking story in news and culture. Right now, I'm sure everyone is aware that Russia has invaded Ukraine. And as, a, as the President Emeritus of the National Council of Women at the United Nations, I'm still very much concerned with the plight of women, children, and families, not just across America, but also around the world. And so in addition to fulfilling what I, what I do on a daily basis in media and luxury and marketing, which is a, a space that I very, very much enjoy, always in the background is this human is this humanitarian side of me that's that always has an eye out and do what i can behind the scenes to lend my voice to marginalized marginalized blocks of people and in this case it is the women children and families in ukraine let me just say this i read a fantastic article today where people are booking mostly americans are booking stays at ukrainian based airbnbs that they have absolutely no intention of staying at to help people in ukraine to help put money directly in the hands and pockets of Ukrainian citizens because the banks have been infiltrated, their money system and fuel supply has been disrupted. So there's so many things happening just to disrupt family life in addition to Russians just decimating, um, decimating and flattening cities. It is noted across multiple media outlets that upwards of 1.5, 1.45, excuse me, million people have fled Ukraine right now. They're fleeing into Poland and, and other places ac across Europe. So this is something that we have to really keep our eyes on. I want to share a little bit, according to BBC News, as to why this is even happening and what's going on with American basketball player Brittany Griner, which is, which is really why I came on to do this special episode. And we have to understand that by air, land, and sea, Russia has launched a devastating attack on Ukraine, a European democracy of 44 million people. Its forces are bombing city centers, closing in on the capital, Kiev, prompting a mass exodus of refugees. So I just need us to process where we think, oh, these things can't happen in America. They can. And this is, I'm not... Fox News. I'm not trying to scare you, but you know, we live a pretty comfortable life here in America, relatively speaking, you know, the, the coronavirus and, and all of our other challenges notwithstanding. And so we need to understand that for months, Russian President Vladimir Putin denied he would invade his neighbor, but then he tore up proverbially a peace deal and unleashed what Germany is calling Putin's war, which is pouring forces into Ukraine's north, east, and south. And as the number of deceased people climbs, the Russia's leader, Russia's, Russia's leader is accused of shattering peace in Europe. It's happening. It's happening. This is live. I think we're at day eight, if I'm not mistaken. Please don't quote me on that. This is either day seven or day eight. So for, for the record, today is March 5th, 2022. And this is podcast number 471. So just to um, cement this in the annals of history. So we want to know... Um, What's going on? And, and you have to be mindful where you get your source of information because there's so much information fluttering around. But what we have to understand uh, in a pre-dawn TV address on February 24th, which is about a week and a half ago, President Putin declared Russia could not feel safe develop and exist because of what he claimed was a constant threat from modern Ukraine. Now, this is what he's claiming. There's nothing to substantiate this fact. So immediately airports and military headquarters were attacked and then tanks and troops rolled in from Russia. Russia annexed Crimea and its ally Belarus. Warplanes have bombed major cities and Russian forces have seized control of the key southern port. So now 
<laughs> Russia refuses to use the term war or even invasion, and many of its leaders' justifications for it were false and have been deemed irrational by many. Now, our last president praises him, but even key Republicans are coming out and saying this is unjust, this is not right, it is a threat. NATO is involved, the United Nations is involved, and I don't want to run around or give the impression that I'm running around like Chicken Little saying the sky is falling, but this is a very, very, very serious issue. President Putin has frequently accused Ukraine of being taken over by extremists. Do your history, folks. Ever since its pro-Russian president was ousted in um, 2014 after months of protests against his rule, then Russia retaliated by seizing the southern region of Crimea, which, is tri which triggered a rebellion in the east. And what that did was backing separatists who have fought Ukrainian forces in a war that, has, that at that time has claimed 14,000 lives. Then by late uh, 2021, which is about a few months ago, Russia began deploying big numbers of troops close to Ukraine's borders. So you you know we you you know I always talk about watching the intersection. We have to pay attention. Oprah Winfrey um I heard Oprah Winfrey say something many years ago um about the whisper before the brick wall. Nobody can really say, "Wow, this just came out of nowhere." Sometimes we can, but for the most part we can't. There are always signs and signals and hints and clues that something is going to happen. And so when Russia began deploying big numbers of troops close to Ukraine's borders the end of last year, people started to take note. And while repeatedly denying that it was going to attack, Mr. Putin then scrapped a 2015 peace deal for the East and recognized areas under rebel control as independent. That right there was the game changer. They have, Russia has long resisted Ukraine's move towards the European Union and the West Defensive Military Alliance, which is us and NATO. And now announcing Russia's invasion, he accused NATO of threatening our historic future as a nation. This, we just don't know how far Russia will go, but it's worth mentioning that this is a very, very serious issue. And so I read another story where we can't feel guilty necessarily about continuing on with our daily lives. We have bills to pay. We're still trying to come out of COVID, overcome COVID, you know, make sure our children are safe. Gas prices are through the roof. But at the end of the day, good people, my good listeners, at the end of the day, we live in a world, uh, we live in a globalized, a flat world, so to speak. So we can no longer take the position that we could years back that that's something that's happening over there or that doesn't concern us. We can't. When I wrote the 2012 book, Life Remixed, the tenant, the primary tenant of that book was globalization, technology, and the economy. That was 2012 when I wrote Life, Re Life Remixed. Think about it. We live in a global society. Where I grew up, this small town in New Jersey, we had blacks, whites, and everybody who was Spanish. My grandfather, God rest his soul, he just called them Puerto Ricans. And that was it. It was mostly blacks, mostly whites, and a couple people of Spanish descent. So I say what my grandfather said, not to be disparaging, but he just bundled everybody together because there were so few of them. It's not like that anymore. <laughs> the United States is not just white, then black, and then everybody else. We are, blacks are not a monolith, and there are we are just this huge melting pot. So now your neighbor's problem is now your problem. And that's real. This is real. This is not a them thing. The United States is so intricately woven into global affairs, whether we as everyday citizens care to acknowledge that or not. And so the real reason I'm doing this special edition, culture and news edition of the Luxury Sci Lounge, which this is indicative of the stories that we talk about. You know, when I do my live luxury side lounge events, these are the things that we talk about because they all impact what? Wealth acquisition. I talk about luxury brands. I talk about luxury lifestyles. I sell luxury homes through Premier Sotheby's International Realty. This, these situations impact 
our ability to acquire wealth. And so this special edition episode is really to bring light and to make my listeners and my readers aware that Phoenix Mercury, according to news reports, Phoenix Mercury all-star and two-time Olympic gold medalist Brittany Griner has reportedly been detained in Russia on drug charges. So now let's, <laughs> you know, the Fox News version would probably be, well, she's a druggie, this and that. We're not going to dismiss this black woman's effort and contribution to women's women in general and women in sports more specifically. She is an Olympic gold medalist twice. So contrary to where black women sit in the pecking order, we cannot dismiss or negate the fact that this woman is at the top of her game, at the top of her craft. And we will not marginalize her just by saying, oh, she had drugs. We don't even know the circumstances. Just like Shakari Richardson could not play because they found marijuana and the other Olympian was allowed to play. I mean, we, let's, let's look at this beyond what we read. As I always say, watch the intersection. The New York Times reported that the Russian Federal Customs Service detained an American basketball player at Sheremetyevo Airport near Moscow after finding hashish oil vape cartridges in her luggage. The Customs Service didn't identify who was arrested, saying only that she'd won two Olympic gold medals. But according to Yahoo Sports, because I do cross-reference, a Russian news service identified the player as 31-year-old Griner, and a security video viewed by the New York Times shows a player that appears to be her also. If you haven't seen her, go to the Luxury Psy Lounge or Luxury Psy on Instagram. I have pictures of her. She is a very identifiable um, person because she has long locks so she's got very identifying features and then you know she's a and she's an athlete so um but uh the video shows her going through security wearing a sweatshirt and a face mask and then it shows someone presumably a customs employee removes something from her bag According to independent Russian news agency Interfax, the arrest happened in February, just after she had arrived um, from New York City. So this is what the New York Post is reporting. A drug sniffing dog indicated narcotics in luggage. And when the bag was x-rayed, quote, so-called vapes were discovered with a specific odor, according to Interfax, which cited the Russian Federal Customs Service. She has not posted on her social since February 5th, so today makes a month. And in a statement released by Customs Service, says a criminal case has been opened. Um, and here's the quote, because due to a large scale transportation of drugs. So let me just digress. Large scale? Yeah, we don't know what that actually is. Large scale is what people deem it to be. If I wake up with $10,000 in the bank, I'm happy. But if somebody really wealthy wakes up with only $10,000 in the bank, they're going to probably jump off the Brooklyn Bridge. So when you see something like large scale transportation of drugs, everything is relative. In Russia, a conviction on those charges carries a sentence of five to 10 years in prison. And I don't think a professional athlete from America wants to spend five to 10 years in prison, which is why I'm doing this show. I blog, put it on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, because I want to raise awareness about this story, particularly with the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. Griner has played in Russia during the off season since 2015. And as a, as actually I'm still a, a licensed certified WNBA agent, I still consult with a couple players behind the scenes, but I don't have any active, any players actively playing for a team right now. Um, but it's very common knowledge that during the off season, they play overseas because they get paid extremely well. And the WNBA, what most people don't really quite realize is it's a summer league. So there's many more months that they have to, that these athletes need to make money outside of their May to September season. So salaries are definitely higher for WNBA players overseas. And her reported arrest came a few weeks before Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So that's leading me to believe that she was arrested at the top of February of 2022. Um, and now 
Every report is urging Americans to get out of Russia. The WNBA, according to my sources, is closely monitoring the situation and encouraging all agents who have clients to get their clients from Europe, Russia, Ukraine, or wherever they be, may be playing. Her agent hasn't released a statement yet, um, the, but, the, but the Mercury, her team, has released a statement just this morning. Again, today is March 5th, 2022, and the Phoenix Mercury released this statement this morning, and I quote, we are aware of and are closely monitoring the situation with Brittany Griner in Russia. We remain in constant contact with her family, her representation, the WNBA and NBA. We love and support Brittany. And at this time, our main concern is her safety, physical and mental health and her safe return home, end quote. The WNBA also released a short statement. Brittany Griner has the WNBA's full support and our main priority is her swift and safe return to the United States. So that was also released. That, that statement was released from the WNBA to USA Today, the newspaper, just this morning. So the State Department on Saturday advised American citizens to depart from Russia immediately, citing the invasion in Ukraine the potential for harassment against U.S. citizens by Russian government security officials is high, and the embassy's limited ability to assist U.S. citizens in that country are contributing factors of why they're urging everyone to leave. But here's the last caveat before I wind this special report down. Airspace has been closed. <laughs> the U.S. shut off Russian airspace. So now, if from other reports that I've read, you can go to the airport, you can try to get out, but all flights are canceled. Cancel, 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 canceled. So how in the world are you supposed to get out? So this is really um, a mixed bag. And trying to um, deconstruct this story is not easy. It's very nuanced. It's very layered. It's very complex. I'm not even going to touch on at length how I have read, and I'm sure many of, and I know for a fact many of my colleagues have read, where they were not even letting people of darker skin tone, not even just necessarily African Americans, out of the country. So all of this is developing, but I felt it necessary and critically important because of my relationship with the WNBA, because of my relationship at the United Nations, for me to come on and at least share my thoughts, my prayers, my insight, and, and, and give instinctual comments about what's happening with these stories. Thank you so much for listening to this special story and this special report on news and culture that's happening. And I will be sure to keep you updated. We have our regularly scheduled Luxury Side Lounge episodes that drop um, every week, every Sunday. But if there is a need, like there was a need today to do a special drop and a special podcast and a special video, I definitely will. Getting across and having our own voices in the media is so incredibly important to me. I have a lot to say on a lot of different things and I will not let my voice be silenced. Thank you so much for listening and always remember we shall pass through this world but once. Any good, therefore, that we can do or any kindness that we can show to any human being, let us do it now. Let us not defer or neglect it, for we shall not pass this way again. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you soon.